Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be bringing you the first of my Dungeoneering guides. Now, I've been meaning to do this for a while and a lot of people have been requesting them so I figured, yeah, better start it. And today I'm just going to show you some of the basic, like, how to sort out your prestige, all about that. And then also I'm going to show you, like, what all the different language means, all the slang terms in Dungeoneering, exactly like what people mean when they say, like, GTGD and things. And then I'm going to explain what all the key codes are and things. I just want people to understand more what people are actually saying. Because, like, I know it's many times. You don't, you, if I say something in the floor, like, to get people to do something, and then no one does anything, I think, I'm, I, I don't know what to think. Do they understand what I mean, or are they sitting there doing nothing? Like, that's the sort of thing. Because a lot of them won't ask what it means because they don't want to look like an absolute noob, you know? So hopefully more people can understand what it is from here. So first of all, I'm going to show you the prestige. Right guys, so right now I'm going to just grab some of the basics of Dungeoneering basically and let's just turn public off and basically how the prestige system works because I know a lot of people, it's they don't understand I guess it's more of a complex system than people are used to having to work with because of the fact that if you get it wrong as well it really does screw your XP so as you can see, I've opened my ring interface which you do by clicking the ring which you get from this guy if you haven't got it already and as you can see there's a few buttons so there's form party which puts me in a party and from this and I can now right click people click invite or I can start solo or I can click this button to just type the name of the person if there's a lot of people and invite them that way and then obviously you've got the leave party button which is self explanatory this button floor which will select what floor you can do which obviously is determined by what level you are complexity now, at first you'll only be able to do complexity one however each complexity enables some, some more skills as you can see and generally you can access larger dungeons the higher complexity you go like if you do complexity two you can only do a small floor and so on and so on and then as you can see five and six have every single skill option available however as you can see there's a massive xp penalty for doing five thirty percent then thirty five forty forty five and assume fifty yep fifty so as you can see that's why complexity six is always done but complexity six adds more puzzles and generally harder harder monsters, harder bosses, and you know generally just a harder floor. So it's really you've got to get good at dungeoneering, and complexity six will be no harder than five or anything else really if you know what you're doing. Now another option is the guide mode. Now you never want to have this on. Depending on your complexity, you will have it on automatically. However, it doesn't make a difference because when you do have it on, you'll be doing your rushes. Now, what I want to say about the rushes is when you complete all your floors, you only do so many larges. Because of the fact doing a floor one large, the XP isn't that good. Rushing floor one through to a bit of a higher floor, because you can do them so fast that it actually saves time because you get to spend more time doing the higher large floors. Now, Born, did a, Born for PVM did a guide yesterday on C2 rushing and I'll link that in the description because it's very important now I was going to do a guide myself but he did one so I thought I'll just link his now it's it, it varies what floor you do your C2 rushes for but it's 80 plus you want to do it to about 29 and then 30 onwards do larges however obviously it really depends on your level but up till 80 you kind of want to do as many larges as you can but I recommend only doing 12 onwards never do a frozen large and unless you're a really low level and you've got some friends doing it with you but generally up until about level 12 and so on I would generally just do it with friends, mess around solo you can still get some decent XP once you get well, you'll get too used to it as well gives you a chance to figure out dungeoneering for yourself if you solo a bit and figure out some of the bosses now the prestige system as you can see at the bottom here I've got current progress 29, previous progress 60 and reset now, previous progress is 60 because I'm level 120, I can do all 60 floors. And that and that's because I've completed every single floor and click that reset button. Now, current progress says how many floors I've completed. So, as you can see, these little ticks are floors that I've actually done. And since I've done them, it ticks off. And that's 29 floors I've ticked off. Now, if I click reset now, so if I click the reset, bu reset button, it says, are you sure you want to reset? And then if I clicked yes, that would go, my previous progress would go to 29. Now, this greatly affects your XP. The XP prestige is based off whichever of these two numbers is highest. So at the lower levels, that might be, your current progress might be higher than your previous progress. 
because of the fact you unlock a floor every two levels. So if you're going on a higher floor than your last run through, you'll get a slightly higher prestige. And you generally want to keep that last floor to be your highest floor to get the most XP. Now, you've got to make sure you get reset at the right time. Because say if I reset now, I really screw my XP. It increases so much the XP you get from lower levels to higher. If say I'm at 120 now, if I do the top floor, floor 60, I can possibly get over 200,000 Dungeoneering XP in one floor. And bearing in mind I can do, on average, I probably do 15 to 20 minute floors. Obviously I can do better and sometimes it ends up being worse, but that's on average. So if you think 200k XP in that time, it makes an, a massive XP rate per hour. And hence why 120 isn't too bad, because as you get to the higher level it is really fast. Now I do agree getting 80 is quite tough. I think you can only access to about a few, the first few of the occult floors possibly. So up to that point I recommend just rushing to about 20ish. And then doing the rest larges if you can find teams. Now, doing them lower levels with a friend is really is is a really good way to do it because dungeoning with friends really makes it more enjoyable. So if you do have a lot of friends that want to train dungeoning, that is the best way. However, other than that, you can try World Seventy Seven. There's a few teams there. However, I have to say a lot of them are not too sure what they're doing, but hopefully they'll learn and start to get better because I'm going to be releasing more guides. Wood. So. I think that's explained most of the prestiges. Oh wait, oh wait, wait, right. Now, as you can see, uh, I need to mention this. As you can see, 40, 48, uh, no, I'll go on to the occult. As you can see, I haven't done all the occults, but I've done some. If I, so I say I've done 46, and we're doing, I'm going to do 46 now. If I complete 46, right, in, in, since I've already done it, it will just take off another occult floor, and it will go for this, this one here, 45. It'll go for the next one down. Or if there's all the ones below it are done, it'll go for the top one. So it'll go for 47. However, you'll get the XP based off 46. If for 47. And the other way around, if it takes off 45 and you do 46, you'll get the XP for 45. So it generally takes the lowest option possible. So if you get what I mean, I hope that's explained it well. However, this was a new addition not so long ago, and it's really helped because before you had to literally do it every floor, and getting a team was very, very difficult. This really made getting a team so much easier because of the fact you can do floor 36 for 37, and floor 39 for 36, and so on. So that really helps. And so I think that's explained all you need to know about the prestige system, so I hope that helps. And now I'm going to go into explaining some of the dungeoneering terminology because of the fact that it is quite tough, there's quite a lot to learn. However, it's not too bad, and hopefully this will help you learn. Right guys, so I've just put a random load of the um, terminology on the screen, and I'm going to go over each one. So, at the top left we've got GTGD, now, this means group tally to the guardian door. Basically, that means tally to the group, group gate stone, which is positioned in a guardian room, so when you tally there, basically kill the monsters in the room. Or, it might not possibly be in the room, it could be next to it, but it means there's a guardian door next to the GT. So you want to go in your spell book and click group gates to teleport. Now, this means at the start of the dungeon you should have crafted laws and cosmics. And I'm going to go over them in a separate video exactly what to do at the start of a floor. Because there's many p parts of dungeon here I need to explain. Now, D-E-N-K -E means dead end no key. Which means you open a dead end door and there was no key in it. It's quite self-explanatory. D-E-W-K means dead end with key. And then it's generally be followed by GK key code. And the reason I put key code in like speech marks is because you'd put GK and then what key you've got. And I'm going to go into the keys after this. So I'll just look. There's all the keys and I'll explain that after. So GK stands for got key. So you say got key and then what key you've got. GH means got herb. So generally after somebody finds like say a 105 runecrafting door, you would say GH and that was it. Because basically that means you've got the herb to do the pot for that door and then you should pretty much go and do the potion and get it ready for the other people or whoever's going to open the door. Now, GTE means group telly to the end so basically the floor's done and they want you to group telly to the group gate stone to end the floor to get all your XP's. MGT means move group telly so basically somebody in the floor needs to move the group gate stone to their path or to another door that everyone can do. Or the leader wants someone to move it. Basically, it doesn't mean that they've reached a dead end. It could be said at any time. 
and if it if it says it and you're the only one like doing a path, then it's most likely going to be you. Most people will follow it with a name or move group tally to a certain door. Now, so then you should know which door you've got gated personally, and basically that's why you need to pay attention to what you're doing. You need to remember what your gate is, and MGT is a term that you'll probably see a lot. MGTBB is quite self-explanatory as well. Move group tally to the boss. GTB means group tally to the boss. GTO means group tally open. So that basically, many times the leader could be, or somebody could be carrying the group gate stone, and everyone should be on the leader's inventory checking his keys. And if the person with the group tally comes across a door that he has the key of, he'll say GTO, GTO to group tally open, so that the leader knows to tell you there, open the door, so that the people can continue on that path. So I hope that's explained them. And if there's any I missed, You'd, if you could like just post them in the comments and I'd like to go over them now you can imagine it being quite difficult for me to just remember on the spot trying to remember every single one because there is quite a few now I know that's quite a lot to take in however once you start using them you'll get used to it you can take out GT for a start it pretty much always means group tally it means the same thing in every single abbreviation so that's a lot of them already and B normally stands for boss and then the rest are just dead end and then GK and GH are the other ones but that generally means got in them ones. So it's not too hard to remember. Once you start doing a few flaws with the terminology, you will really pick it up insanely fast. Now, going up to the keys, on the left I've got them in nice pretty colours to define which colour that means. So obviously B is blue, P is purple, and so on and so on. You can tell from the colour what it is. And even though that's red, that's crimson because Jagex decided to be awkward. When it's clearly red, Jagex, clearly red! And then on the right, I've got the shapes. Now, I've got all the shapes in the red text and then all the names of the shapes in the blue text. So, as you can see, SH stands for shield, CO for corner, and so on and so on. You can see them from the screen and you can pause it if you want to spend longer reading these. So, generally, you add the second letter if there's another one with the same original letter. So, as you can see, crescent and corner begin with the same C. So, hence, that's why they added an O and an R. Now, I don't know why SH really picked up because obviously there's not another key with S. However, so you might possibly see sometimes people saying, say, green S or GRS. And that's just because you can shorten it to S, but pretty much everyone says SH. I'm not sure why, but it's not exactly harder to type one more letter. So, as you can see from my little pro diagram at the bottom, you take the colour and then you take the shape and put it on the end. So as you can see from my example, example orange pentagon you take the o from the left and the p from the right and together it becomes op so if you see you found the key and it's the orange pentagon you would type gk space op and that would mean you've just found the orange pentagon now another thing i want to mention is people say buy and sell now if you're saying buy it means you won that item and if you're saying sell it means you're dropping that item so when you say so many times during the dungeon you'll probably see people say buying be cool so saying that that means the buying the blue corner and the one the person who has the blue corner to drop it on the group gate stone generally it always means a group gate stone in certain scenarios it might not and then selling means that you've probably found a key that you've say, say that you've just gk'd so you've just gk'd orange pentagon to use that as an example again and then when you're dropping it on the group cat group gate stone you probably want to say selling group um selling orange pentagon so you'd say sell op it's just Saving a lot of time typing is really important. Now, it might not seem important, but if you want to reduce your floor times from 30 to 20 minutes, this is a big help because a lot of people will stand and type rather than... You can run and fight and run to open doors while typing two letters. Typing two letters takes no thought whatsoever and you can do it no matter what you're doing. However, typing a full sentence is quite terrible. Um, quite, um, quite a long time to do. So imagine if you're writing... Can everyone tell you to the group gate stone to kill this guardian door? Obviously that's exaggerating a bit, but you get what I mean. That takes quite a bit of time to type out. Even if you're the fastest typer, that wastes a bit of time and concentration that you could be doing opening doors. So that's all I want to explain for this video. And I really hope this has helped. Now, I understand dungeoning is a very difficult skill to um, include everything with. Because of the fact that there's so much to it. So if really, if people want to suggest in the comments exactly what they want to know about Dungeoneering, I can do it. 
because it's quite hard to cover everything and I don't know what people really need. Now I will be doing the puzzle guides and the boss guides at some point because I know a lot of people struggle with some of the puzzles and don't know what to do and people will come across new bosses and don't know what to do with them. So hopefully I'll cover each boss in each puzzle. I'll probably do a few puzzle videos to cover all of them and probably a one boss per boss video. So if there's anything else people want to know then please leave it in the comments. I'll try, if I can answer it in a question I will, if I have to do a vid if you want it as a video then I'll do it as a video. Now I do want to plan to do on the starting a dungeon, so basically what to do when you first get into a floor. Basically like looting, what to loot from the table and then what runes to craft and what to do basically. So I hope this has helped everyone guys and I just want to note my Road to One Bill um, video probably will not be this week. It's normally obviously today however really the last week I've done a lot of PVM and had absolutely no luck. I mean I've got a couple of drops however it's not really going to be good for the video. I want to get a lot more drops on the video. Because last week obviously it was it had so many so much luck that it made the video so much better, and I don't want it to be disappointing me just getting nothing. That's not interesting to watch, and the tabs not really changed at all apart from the extra drop. So I'm gonna try and keep that until I've saved up quite a few drops instead of doing it weekly. So hopefully after I get some more drops, I'll do that. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow for another video.